We like to talk about $60 silver. We like to talk about $3,000 gold. But maybe we don't like to talk about the fact that someone, and it was a woman, because we love our women stackers that are coming into the uh, precious metals arena, that we had a woman executed in England over an offense related to silver. We're going to talk about that. And more importantly, we're going to talk about how that relates to what's going on right now in regards to the particular offense of which she was accused. But we got a lot more to talk about as well. You guys brought up some great points about bricks. We're going to talk about that. Why? Why? Is gold and silver so hated in America? Not by us, right? But why does everybody else either not care for gold and silver or, or just is apathetic in general? We're going to get to the bottom of that. What about this idea that we're going to hit a big recession, right? I think it, a lot of people think it, and everybody's scared that silver and gold are going to crash when we have a recession. I'm going to tell you my opinion on that, and it's not the normal story that you hear. We're going to cover that as well. We got the Fed next week. We'll touch on that. And of course, our good friend CBDC. But these ideas came from you, input that you gave on a community post that I put out. So I'm going to read your comments and then give you my, uh, my take on things. And you, of course, in the comment section, fire away. We want to hear from you. Let's start out by talking about... A woman who was executed in England, and not just executed, but burned at the stake. What was her offense? She was shaving silver off of silver coins. Now, this happened over 200 years ago, I know, but it relates to what's going on right now in the world with counterfeit coins. We see counterfeit American silver eagles. We see counterfeit coins, Morgans of all make and model, right? It's prevalent. And I want to address why what happened back then relates to what's happening now when it comes to people making and selling counterfeit coins. But let me just read this to you very quickly. Her name was Phoebe Harris. She was shaving pieces off of old British silver coins. She was clipping pieces, melting them down, and making her own coins, counterfeit coins. They caught her, and she was sentenced to death. I want to read you. This is gruesome, so be prepared, okay? This is gruesome. Uh, at 7.30 a.m., and this was on the 21st of June, 1786, first there were six men who were hung out of the debtor's prison in England. I guess back then, if you took out debt and couldn't pay it, you could eventually be sentenced to death, okay? But then Phoebe, this woman who was, who was accused and convicted of making counterfeit silver coins, Phoebe was led from the debtor's door of Newgate by two sheriff's officers to a stake that had been erected halfway between the gallows and New Newgate Street. The stake was about 11 feet high and had a metal bracket at the top from which a noose dangled. Phoebe was described as a quote-unquote well-made little woman of something more than 30 years of age with a pale complexion and not disagreeable features. She was reported to be terrified and trembling. Yes, I would be too. She was terrified and trembling as she was let out. She mounted a stool and the noose was placed around her neck and was allowed a few moments to pray with the ordinary before her support was removed and she was left suspended. According to Gattrell's book, The Hanging Tree, she died hard. He reported, and remember, this is because she was making counterfeit silver coins, okay? After hanging for a half hour, the executioner put an iron chain around her upper body and fastened it to the stake with nails. Again, guys, this was just over 200 years ago, and this was because she made counterfeit coins. Two cartloads of faggots, I guess that's something that's burnable, were now piled around the stake and then lit. It is reasonable to assume that she would have been quite dead by this time. After a while, the fire burnt through the rope and Phoebe's body dropped. Remaining attached to the stake by the chain, it took over two hours to be completely consumed by the fire, which continued to burn until midday. 
Yeah, guys, that happened 200 years ago, right? Um, they say there were 20,000 people, 20,000 people who showed up to watch this, this horrible situation unfold. Now, it's horrible that she was counterfeiting coins, right? We hear it all the time. Here, Coin Shop Chris and I did a video about this. This is a Morgan, right? A beautiful Morgan silver dollar. Look at that thing, right? Except one little problem. When you take a magnet, see this little magnet? Watch. A magnet sticks to it. It's a fake. These things are all over, I think, on eBay. You need to be careful who you're buying from, right? There are great sellers on eBay. They're all over on Etsy. They're all over everywhere. Fakes, okay? Here's my question for you. Does it make you a little suspicious that, that, that now... I don't know. I don't hear of anybody getting in any real material trouble for making fake silver coins, fake silver bars, right? What I'm suspicious about is we know the government, we know the powers that be, the fiat money, they, they don't like silver and gold. Are they, I don't want to say encouraging this, but are they not going after the people now that make fakes because, hey, that kind of could undermine a lot of people's confidence in silver and gold. The tungsten-filled gold bars, we've all heard about that. The fake Morgans, the fake Eagles, the fake all the silver coins. Are they maybe letting that occur because they don't? They want people to be suspicious of what goes on in the gold and silver sector? Does that make sense to you? It makes me just a little suspicious, right, that 200 years ago when the money was based on silver, it was a, an offense punishable by death to make fakes. But today, it seems prevalent on a lot of the big major websites, especially, that you can find fake silver and fake gold. A lot of it made in China. Uh, are they doing that on purpose? I don't know. You let me know in the comments. Am I, am I just crazy to even think that? Or could that be the case? Let's move on to our next story. We got a lot to cover. You know what? Before I do that right now, I want to say thank you. I want to say thank you, thank you, thank you. And I want to read a couple names of some people that were super generous with my daughters. They had a lemonade stand today. I told them I would match whatever money they made if they invested that money then into silver because they're saving for a vacation that they want to go on in 18 years. Okay, and I thought, what a better way to teach kids about silver is, hey, I'll match whatever you make. And I put up a post on the community page, and I had some super awesome generous uh, gifts that were given to the girls. Virtual lemonade, okay? Um, Gregory S. Gregory Sanford. I'll just read the names. Uh, Chris Paris, okay? Um, I got, we got, the girls got, not me, the girls got uh, $25 from Andrew Maluski. James Smith, was overly generous with my daughters and we are tomorrow going to go to scotsman coin here in st louis and buy the silver and i will put a picture of them with the silver on the community page james smith gave the girls 60 dollars, which just blew them away made them so happy they're so excited they actually tonight asked me already twice are we going to the coin shop tomorrow daddy so we are and finally luxury again gave three dollars that was for Doc Ride, Goose, and Brian. Thank you to everyone who contributed. Thank you. It means a lot. It meant a lot to the girls. And I'm going to get to teach them a little bit about silver as well. Okay. Do we need to reconsider cryptocurrency? Remember, gold and silver are the only forms of real money. We know that, right? Everything else is unicorn fart dust. But I had a great comment come in from the Thread of Life. He said, hi, Ron. There's a very important thing to understand about people who invest in crypto. Thank you, Clifton, for the super chat. Man, you guys, so generous. They have the same outlook, these people in crypto. And I have to admit, I read this comment, and it opened my mind a little bit. I want to see if it does the same for you. Okay, that people in crypto have the same outlook as you and see what's coming. We know the financial, you know, all that stuff. We know the big picture. Our heads not being in the sand, right? As a metals holder, 
you should see this rather than creating a duality in the contrast. I personally buy both as they represent the same thing. Our store of energy and value. Let's give some perspective on this. Metal is fine when transacting locally, but what if you want to transact across the country or even globally? You won't be shipping your gold or silver to an international seller. Food for thought. Thank you, Sassy Silver, for the super chat. And I think there's some 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 good uh, there, 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 there's some truth to what he said, right? I, uh, we do. I do have to realize that a lot of Bitcoin people, for instance, have the same view on the fiat money system as I do. Okay, and in that way, we can we can uh, we can be brothers in that regard. I'm still going to say I personally don't believe in Bitcoin. I was thinking about this just the other night. Again, thinking about Bitcoin, thinking about crypto, and I thought, how can something that's nothing be something? And I, it's, it's, to me, it's still, it's, it's nothing. It's just not there. It's not real. And um, at, the, at the end of the day, I want to make sure that I... Um, I'm getting a message from Coin Shop Chris. I missed the super chat. Sassy Silver, thank you for the super chat. Clifton, thank you for the super chat. Sharon, well, thank you for the super chat. I don't think I missed any there. So thank you guys. Uh, we are viewer supported. It goes a long way. It's never expected, never uh, uh, expected that anyone, but super appreciated and super helpful. Um, as we as we uh, as we run a household off a of YouTube channel income. Anyway, you don't want to hear about my personal situation. The Bitcoin people they know the same story that we do. I think where we disagree, me personally, is I still don't see Bitcoin as being real. I could be wrong. <clears throat> you know, twenty years from now, I could be wrong. Who knows? Okay, next point. Excellent piece of input here. This is about why. Have you ever wondered why? Why silver and gold? Why nobody in the USA and a lot of the other Western countries really appreciates? Why Why are we the elite, <laughs> right? Or the or the ones that have that aren't with the herd is another way to say it. But I like to say you are elite. We are elite, right? Why Why do 98% of people just don't even really care about silver and gold and platinum? You ever wondered that? And here's a, a question I had from a viewer, Joanne Diaz. Why do you think Western culture does not have the same appreciation for precious metals as Eastern cultures. I think it's real easy. The USA dominates, so I'm gonna say this in terms of the USA. Uh, in 1933, Roosevelt made it illegal for you to own gold, maybe not silver, but basically made it illegal to own gold, which is the king daddy at the time. Okay, so from 1933 until 1974, it was illegal to own gold as an investment in the United States. I mean, isn't that bizarre? Isn't that weird? To me, that's very strange, very bizarre. So we had that whole, what, 40-year period, basically, where it was illegal to own gold. 1974, they made it possible. But just before they made it that you could own gold again, they took the United States off the gold standard. So basically, from a mainstream perspective, from 1933 uh, up till 74, illegal. From 71 on, we weren't on the gold standard anymore. We've got like two generations where in the mainstream, gold was just not even there. It just wasn't even um, advertised or talked about in any way. So where do we learn from? We learn from our parents. Well, that's why I'm going to bring the girls to the coin shop tomorrow and let them buy a couple, three ounces, maybe four ounces each of silver because I'm teaching them. They see me. They're learning from me. But I didn't learn this from my parents or my grandparents. And you may have, right? But most people in the West haven't. It's just not part of our culture. It was illegal. And then it was downplayed or it was demeaned or it was not, um, not, not encouraged. It was discouraged. It was discouraged. That's the easy way to say it. 
And it really still is discouraging. And to go back to the idea about the counterfeits, I still think, right? They don't, they, the government doesn't care if people counterfeit, make counterfeit silver coins, right? That that helps kind of discourage people from wanting to invest in. They hear stories, they make a big deal about, oh, this ripoff going on with silver and gold. So uh, that's what we're fighting against, right? That and just the simple fact that when they took the dollar off the gold standard, it became competition for uh, gold, became competition for the dollar. As easy as that. Uh, AUAG83 asks this, how, how there's no gold-backed BRICS currency, how there is no gold-backed BRICS currency going to be launched contrary to what we've been told on YouTube? Yeah, that's a big story right now, right? August 22nd, BRICS. Supposedly, we're going to hear about a gold-backed currency. But now, and I'm just, I don't want to be the bearer of bad news. Don't shoot the messenger. It feels like in the last week, we're getting some pushback on that, right? And yes, and maybe I'm part of the, you know, people on YouTube, people uh, in, in the press were making a big deal about this fact that we're going to have a gold-backed currency in the BRICS, right? Brazil, Russia, India, China, South Africa. But but how did that get started? James Rickards really, I think, got the ball rolling. He published an article about three weeks ago predicting it. Then the Russian embassy in Zimbabwe made the announcement that the BRICS were going to officially talk about a gold-backed currency on August 22nd. But look, guys, again, we're always going to talk about both sides of the equation here. Did you hear? The Russian Central Bank, it's a woman... I won't even try to pronounce her name, but she this last week kind of put out uh, information to the market saying, hey, guys, this is uh, uh, probably not going to happen right now. It's very challenging. It's very difficult. So I'll just be honest with you. Right now, I'm seeing about a 40% chance that we're going to get official word of a gold-backed digital currency on August 22nd. I know that's not a fantastic piece of news that we want, but I'm just being real with you. That's just what I see going on. That doesn't in any way affect my long-term view on gold, silver, and platinum. Okay? Gold, silver, and what the Eastern Bloc countries are doing, and the big trend toward de-dollarization. All of that remains in place. The appreciation, like we talked about earlier, of the Eastern cultures of gold, silver, and platinum, that remains in place. Okay? So, uh, but, but in terms of this August 22nd, I hope I'm wrong. I hope my 40% is correct. Okay? But we'll see, we'll see how that plays out. Steven Voboda has a question. He says... He says, and this is a good question and something we hear about all the time, if we have a severe recession, do you think the price of silver will plummet? Steve from Fort Collins, Colorado. No, I don't. Now, I'll go against the grain on that one. Everybody says, oh, if we have a big recession, gold's going to crash. Silver's going to crash. Look what it did during the great financial crisis. Look what it did. During, uh, during the little health scare we had back in March of 2020 when they locked everybody into their house. Gold and silver, and it did, right? I bought some silver that Saturday. It was one of my best buys ever. Anyway, nonetheless, I don't think it's going to happen again. Number one, when everybody thinks something's going to happen, especially in the markets, I've just observed the opposite happening, but I'm not basing it upon that. I will tell you this. The, the situation, the economy, the monetary system, the fiscal system is so delicate right now, right? It's so screwed up. It's so sensitive that they aren't going to have the luxury of time to wait to let things get really crappy. They're going to have to move quick. So contrary to what everybody else says, Right? I'll go out on a limb and say, no, I don't think silver, I don't think gold will crash. Now, just look back two, three months ago when we had the little banking crisis. Do you remember that? Huh? That was a crisis. That was a big deal. And what happened? And Susie says, I got to ring the bell. I will, Susie. Let me make this point. <laughs> She's yelling down the clothes chute at me. <laughs> 
I'm in the basement. There's a clothes shoot. This is an old house. Anyway, at least she's not throwing clothes down there at me. Anyway, back to my point, which I almost forgot. When we had the banking crisis, what happened? Did silver, did silver crash? The markets were in turmoil temporarily. It was a micro situation that they papered over. We won't get into that. The banks are still screwed. Excuse my language. I don't like the curse. That was borderline. Okay. But Nonetheless, guys, no. Silver immediately reacted with unbelievable demand. People, you couldn't get silver. I'm going to go to Scotsman tomorrow, okay? I went to Scotsman a couple times during that two, three-week period. There was nothing on their silver shelf. I mean, nothing. It was gone. So, the next crisis that hits, now if it's a slow-moving recession, eh, maybe... What? Okay, <laughs> can you guys hear her? She's yelling at me. I got to ring the bell. We got 100 thumbs up. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, because we got 116. Uh, so we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. I'm going to the comments. Mark Razor! Roger Yao! World Reserves Ratio. Silver. 17 to 1 gold. Yes, thank you, Roger. Daryl Glass is yelling at me about the bell. Man, I need to pay more attention. Hey, before I forget, I got to tell you something very important for your own personal safety, okay? When you're watching my videos, when you see the comment section, never click on a link, okay? The only people that I can put links up are me, Susie, Neil, Coin Shop Chris, and Buddy Rumble, the Louisiana Gold Guru. If anybody else throws a, a link up there, if it's some link that even looks like, you know, be careful that it says Ron's Basement, okay? If it's a link that says, you know, something enticing. I was going to make a joke. It's not, I can, my jokes aren't that good anymore right now. But like, you know, like a link that says, see Ron with his shirt off. Don't click on it, okay? It could be dangerous. Be careful what you click on. Hello, Susie. Hello, Thomas. Ron, will it crash but rebound hard like 2020? Yeah, when well, Tom, like I said, I don't think it's going to crash hard. I just, I don't. I don't think we're going to have a big crash in the silver price and gold price. I have dry powder. I've been saving up some dry powder in case it does. Coin Shop Chris is all, you need to buy more silver, Ron, buy more silver. I said, I'm, I'm saving up some dry powder in case it does happen. And that's what I would recommend as well, guys. You know, you know, maybe save up a little dry, whatever you're comfortable with. Because if we do, if we do get a down, I mean, I'm telling I'll tell you this right now. If silver gets back to $22 an ounce, I'm buying. If silver gets back to $20 an ounce, I'm buying more. If silver gets down to $18 an ounce, I'm buying even more. And I'll probably be out of dry powder at that point. But that's kind of my, my, the way I look at it right now. Sober, silver. Yes, yes, yes. I'm sober, guys. You know, people ask, are you, no, I don't do nothing. I don't drink. I do nicotine and caffeine. That's it. That's all I do. That's all I do. Always sober when buying silver. Yeah, I would recommend that you be sober when you buy your silver also. I'm sorry, you probably heard the slurp. That's some leftover lemonade from the lemonade stand. Peru is number one in silver reserves. They are silver rich as civil unrest. Probably bankers instigating the unrest. You know, I'm talking tomorrow morning uh, with a gentleman from Peru who's uh, the fourth generation in his family silver miner. And in my opinion, is one of the most respectable, high quality high performance people in the mining sector and he knows silver like nobody mr jorge ganoza the ceo of fortuna silver i gotta tell you i love dan welton at first mining gold we have great conversations i love jorge all right um, um i you know i love peter grandich i'm gonna be talking to him tuesday i'm real excited tomorrow to talk to jorge and i'm gonna get his read on the silver market so be looking for that video Jorge's a good guy. It's a billion-dollar company. He started that company from scratch. Started with one mine. Now they have five mines. So, anyway. Bix Weir warns of the banks imploding. Yeah, there's three things, Dave, going on right now with the banks, right? They're having to pay out 
a lot of money and in interest to get people to keep their money in the banks, right? You can get three, four, five percent on a bank account right now. So that's killing the banks. But even worse, I'm going to talk about the banks because, guys, it is scary. Okay, that's this is unplanned, but we got to talk about this. Even worse, their bond. They all they bought a bunch of bonds. You gave the bank your cash. They went out and bought government bonds. I mean, who bought, no offense if you did, but who bought a bunch of government bonds two years ago at 2% interest? Not smart, right? Their bond portfolios down. Thank you, Nick, for the super chat. Prove this is live. Clap the bell. Clap the bell, not ring it. Clap. There you go. I'll clap. I'm live, baby. This is live. Trust me. I think there's like a 10 second delay or something. The other thing the banks have are commercial real estate. So if you go to the bank, okay, if everybody showed up at the bank and said, we want our money, they don't have it. They don't have your money because they got they, they, they own a bunch of commercial real estate now, or they're about to, that's worth 60, 70 percent, okay, of what they loaned out on. They own a bunch of bonds that they maybe are worth 60, 70, 80 percent of what they paid for them. Guys, it's real, okay? The banks don't have the money. It's called unrealized losses. Excuse me, they don't have to recognize the losses until until they they sell the bonds or they prepare to sell the bonds. They're just it, I don't know, shut up about this, but it'd be like you buying a stock, Apple computer for $200, and six months later, it's down to $120, and your wife asks you, how's our Apple stock? You're like, it's great. It's great. You know, I'm just not, I'm making believe it didn't go down from 200 to 120 because we're not going to sell it, right? No. If you need the money, right, and you go and you need to liquidate that, it's not there. And that's what I mean. If everybody shows up at these banks and wants their money, the banks are force majeure. They don't have it. It is a scary, scary situation. Let me go to the comments. I'm, I'm keeping up with you guys here. More cowbell. The cowbell will get rung as soon as we get 200 thumbs up, and I know we're going to do it tonight. I mean, we're on a roll here, guys. Okay. Fiat is almost dead. Yes, Fiat is on its deathbed. Jim Tillipow, good to see you. Good to see you here, my friend. All right, let's go on to the next comment. Okay. Uh, Andrew McKelvin6149 wants to know about the Fed's move next week. I talked about that ad nauseum this morning. I won't bore you uh, that we're here. We're going to be, everything's going to be middle of the road. Everything's going to be exactly as expected from the Fed on Wednesday. That's my prediction. Okay. I can be wrong, but we're going to have everything this Wednesday exactly as the market expects from the Fed. And then what's going to happen Thursday and Friday? People are going to start to wake up. And as they wake up, they're going to realize that the economy's kind of screwed. The Fed is kind of screwed. The Fed is just fighting to keep whatever confidence they can right now. Because, you know, Yellen, she's over, you know, going over to China, begging them for help. We're, we are in a pickle right now, right? China, Saudi Arabia, right? The world is changing like never before. The banks are broke. Oh, you know, people all of a sudden, right? Not just us, not just you and me, because we do. We, we've chosen to take our head out of the sand. And I congratulate you for that. You're more prepared than 98, 99% of the other people out there. They'll start to wake up, right? Yeah, and I think next week, right now, I said it earlier today, we're going to have gold over 2,000 an ounce. We're going to have silver. It's going to take a little while to catch catch some more traction. Neil, I'm looking forward to some big ga big gains and platinum as well. Hey, I can be wrong. You know that. That's what I see. I can talk about what's going to happen this Wednesday forever, but we we talked about that earlier. Here's a great one from Alan Fieldsen, 6503. Is the whole, this is about CBDCs, is the whole, this is, C, you know, we know we got Fed now this week, right? The Federal Reserve put the plumbing in place for possibly, for possibly being able to just plug in a new CBDC when we do have the crisis that's bound to happen. Don't they always happen? Can't we just look at like recent history and see that? 
But his question was this, is the whole world going to be on the same level? Or will each nation have its own digital currency and have different exchange rates, like an e-pound, an e-dollar, an e-zelati, an e-yen? That's a great question. When We don't know. Nobody knows that answer for sure. Now, I heard Lynette Zhang. I have to keep going back to her. I have a lot of respect for her and her intelligence and insight. Lynette Zhang said... She thinks it will be a one world. Thank you, Nick, for the super, sh super, super chat. No, I did not take. I have a degree in accounting. <laughs> Good thing I didn't study communications, right? Um, thank you, though, Nick. I appreciate. I love your Nick trademark. Thank you. Um, Lynette says she she the way I understand the way she foresees things happening is it will be a one world currency. Right? They'd like to talk about these, uh, I think it's the International Monetary Fund, special drawing rights that have been distributed amongst all the countries. We'll see how it plays out. We'll see if the BRICS want to play ball. It's going to be, it's, it's um, guys, we really are in a period of change like no other. Mo I'm 53 years old. You're probably, give or take, somewhere in my range. We, uh, we have not seen... A period of change like this in our lifetime okay this is big and just because they're not talking about it on cnn they're not talking about it on cnn and fox and cnbc and the today show because they don't it's not good news right and they don't want people really knowing what's going on hello chuck <laughs> thank you man get bourbon and cigar on the deck and looking forward to solid silver week all right enjoy your bourbon and cigar thank you chuck that is really nice much appreciated they don't want us to know chuck they don't want you to know they don't want me to know what's really happening out there look Look, I don't, I, you know, I, I don't want this. Ron's basement is about community and learning and trusting and and us moving forward and preparing together. I worked for a big four accounting firm, right? The one of the most prestigious in the world. I can be technical, right? To me, that's not where the meat of the matter is. The meat of the matter is looking at the big picture, trying to put it all together. And I don't know about you, but when I look at the big picture, when I look as objectively as I can about what's going on, either fiscally, monetarily in the United States, right? What my neighbors are doing, what the world is doing. If we zoom out and think about what's going on in the world and geopolitically, even, you know, war going on right now. I just, I don't see uh, the next five, 10 years being status quo, like we've maybe enjoyed here. I mean, we've been spoiled in the United States, right? I mean, we kind of went on a little spending binge over the last 20, 10, 20, 30 years, depending on how you want to quantify it. Um, you know, I think that, 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 that the next 10, 20, 30 years are going to look much different. And that's why we want to be prepared. Okay, Real Jose says, Ron, talk about the app called Glint Pay. And I touched on this. They reached out to me to want to sponsor the channel or do an affiliate program. I don't know a lot about it. Glint is a, is a service based in London. I'm, I may get some of this wrong, so correct me if I'm wrong. But you are able to vault physical metal with Glint, and then you actually have a debit card, which allows you to spend your metal. So you can save in gold or silver. I believe you can do gold, silver, maybe platinum as well, and spend with it. Um, I haven't heard of anybody having any big problems with it, but I don't know enough to say, for me personally, to say, yes, I recommend this. Yes, I think it's a great deal. You know, I'm still looking into it. I do know there's a lot of people that really like it. I got some positive positive feedback, no doubt about it. So that's about what I know about Glenn. I do know this too. I am becoming more, I got another super chat. Wow. Thank you, Steve LaPointe. Thank you. Well, there, that's what I was just going to say. And thank you, Cook Kent, Cook Kent for the super chat as well. Um, uh, Steve LaPointe, that's what I was just going to say. I am becoming more of a um, especially over the last five, six weeks, if, if I don't hold it, I don't own it, right? I mean, I probably, my needle personally has been has started to go back that way. Let me ask you, 
in the comments, okay, type four for yourself, four, the number four, if you're a solid 100%, if I don't own it, I don't, if I don't hold it, I don't own it person. I want to see our group that we have here. Daryl Glass is a four. Sharon's a four. Carl's a four. Fast Landing, Steve. BCC's a four. Metabol's four. Mike four. Richard Cooper's a four. Keaton Morin's a four. Karen Wilson's a four. Doc Red's a four. Oh, boy. You guys are all fours. I can't read all these names. Paul Scott. <laughs> oh, my gosh. You guys are awesome. Jonathan Britton's a four, Solar Therm, J.C. Redfoot, Paul Beeler, Matt Tendall, Gerald Draper, Moon Lady. I'm going to be talking to our good, like, a, like a, a legend in the precious metal sector. An absolute legend. Lynette Zhang next week. All right? Man, guys, I'm going to give it my 10-second plug. We are so excited about all the women. Annie Oakley, Roxanne Denny, right? Uh, uh, all the women that are joining us in in the uh, in the stacking community. I mean, Linda, <laughs> it's <coughs> it's awesome. It's absolutely awesome. Okay, I think it's safe to say that we are a if you don't hold it, you don't own it crowd. All right, let's open this box from our good friend Buddy Rumble. What do you say? I, I I've not opened this. I have no idea. What's inside here? I don't want to break anything. Buddy is too generous. Oh boy, it's in a box. What up? Uh, dear Ron, Buddy wanted to send you a little. <laughs> oh boy, Buddy. I can only imagine what I got in here. It says here, dear Ron, Buddy wanted to send you a little unicorn fart dust. This is from Bell Star. Bell Star's been on the show lately, guys. You got to go watch Bell Star's interview. That's Buddy Rumble's mom. She's a stacker. She's smart. I can only imagine what this is going to look like. How do I open this box? Oh, boy. It's a puzzle. <laughs> I got to say, I missed a super chat. Chris says, I'm going to be back. I'll be back. Let's see what's in here, guys. Oh, man. Uh, lemonade day yes no i did i talked about the lemonade day uh-oh wow oh man i don't know what this is it's almost there guys oh wow oh look at this that is awesome <laughs> check this out it's the old unicorn that is oh look isn't that beautiful Thank you, Buddy Rumble. Thank you. What's on the back? Oh, it's a cop. I love copper rounds. Look at that. Thank you, Buddy. Man, that's going to be right here. So I see it every day. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Let's see. Yes, everybody that helped out with the lemonade, uh, I, 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 I say thank you, thank you, thank you. Did I miss a super chat? Let me see here. Let me see. Doc Ryder! 4x4, four four, man. Yes, that's right. Doc Ryder is a, if you don't hold it, you don't owe it. Cool Ken TG and Steve LaPointe. Guys, you've been overly generous. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Donald DeMarc says, Ron, let's talk about the amount of silver we have and how much more we need. How much silver do you have? Let me ask you. Right? You know. I know. Right? How much do we need? That's an, a question that guys, anybody who can, says they can definitively tell you how much silver exactly you need is lying to you. Okay? No doubt about it. Now, me personally, if, if I had to tell somebody, I'd say get six months worth of living expenses and today's silver price at today's living expenses. Because I'll tell you what could easily happen. Here's the good news. If you can accumulate six months worth of living expenses in silver and we and things get really crappy, really crappy. Number one, you can cut back on your expenses, most likely, right? Number two, if things get really, really crappy, the relative value of that silver will likely go up 
and you'll find yourself with at least a year's worth of living expenses, maybe even more. Guys, we could get into a situation, think back just three months ago, the little banking, you couldn't find silver, the premiums went crazy, and that was a minor uh, crisis, right? Minor compared to what could be coming down the road, compared to other crises. And what's been happening when these, what happened when the little health crisis hit, the big health, whatever you want to say it back in 2020, what, it, right? You couldn't find silver, remember? Same thing happened. So what's going to happen if a big crisis hits? We could see silver relative to other real things, right? Like food or gas or whatever. We could see silver absolutely explode. So how much should you have? I, if you're anything like me, you never have enough, right? But if you want to put a number on it, roughly, you know, other people say more, you need a year, you need 18 months. People, people will disagree with me. That's fine. But that's kind of where I see uh, where I would put that number. Okay. Oh, we got a few more. C-130, a norm, a regular on the show said this. Do yourself a favor. Only buy 90% and above silver coins. You're welcome. As you know, I've been buying 40% Kennedy half dollars, 1965 to 1969. They are a little bit of an oddball within the uh, junk silver arena, right? They're 40% silver, 60% copper, like that beautiful copper round. Let me show you one more time that our good friend Buddy Rumble sent us. Thanks again, Buddy. <laughs> okay. I like them. I know that smelters don't like them. The guys that melt metal down because it makes it difficult for them to extract the silver for reasons which are beyond my capacity to explain to you tonight. But nonetheless, um, you know, even 40 percenters, look, you know, I counted mine up last night and figured out how many ounces of silver. It's silver. And I think... And here's the other big benefit to them. They are the last bastion of being able to buy silver at or near spot. And, you know, hey, they, they could become collectible. I know you think I'm crazy. That's fine. I'm going to touch on this, and it's a sensitive subject, okay? Mark Pachal 26 2 said, Executive Order 11110. That has to do with President Kennedy and the assassination of President Kennedy. You know, there's a whole, there's all kinds of craziness surrounding that whole thing. Apparently, President Kennedy had, uh, and I've heard this several times, and then I looked it up and read about it. President Kennedy had, um, had, had put out this executive order. It was going to hurt the Federal Reserve. And some people think, and it had to do with silver. Okay, look it up. Executive order 11110. Some people think that that might have to do something with these. I'm not saying that. I don't, you know, but... Um, that's a theory which seems believable when you read about it, okay? I don't know. Um, again, Executive Order 11110. <coughs> Fast landing! 1110. Is it five ones? One, two, I think it's four ones. If you put it in, it'll come up, guys. It's worth reading about. It's interesting. Kennedy was was basically, I don't know, moving the dollar back to basically being redeemable for silver. And let's just say there's some people that think that didn't go over too well with other people who were in power. Wow. You guys have been great to me, this channel. I appreciate you, okay? Again, thank you to everybody that donated to the lemonade stand. I'm bringing the girls tomorrow to buy silver with that money, and I got to match it. That was the deal. So <laughs> thank you. Steve. LaPointe says, thank you for the super chat, Steve. Just 0.03% of the population is in silver. <clears throat> if just 5% of the U.S. population gets into silver, there will be a huge shortage of silver. Yeah, Steve. Um, 
Absolutely. That's one of the most exciting things about the precious metals theory, thesis, investment thesis. One, I mean, yeah, I hear uh, Rick Rule says 0.5% of the world's investable financial assets are in precious metals. 0.5%. <clears throat> the long-term average is 2%. Okay, so if we just went back to average, that would be four times as much money in precious metals and related investments, mining stocks, okay? Four times, four times. Imagine, again, imagine the shortages we've had in the silver market over the last three years, right? The health crisis, the banking crisis. Imagine if suddenly we had four times as much people coming in, but that gets even better because that number has been as high as 5%, okay, and stayed at 5% for some, you know, relatively long periods of time. 5% would be 10 times the money, okay? Yeah, sure, there's silver available. I'm confident tomorrow when I go to Scotsman, there will be silver available for my daughters to buy. But imagine if we have five times, four times, 10 times as much money in the sector, do you think there's still going to be silver available? We know the Silver Institute is telling us the last two years there's been a massive deficit, way more silver demanded, 240, 233, 43 million more ounces demanded last year than could be supplied by the mines or recycling. Those are the only two places silver comes from, okay? I don't know. Where's it going to come from? Tell me. You know, and you know, the same is true for platinum. The same, oh boy, hey guys, we're almost there. 200 thumbs up. I know it's a big special treat. I bet you just all, you know, can't wait. But we're going to ring the cowbell and it's going to happen. Happen very, very, very soon. I got one, I got, one, I got something else. Oh, let me, okay. I haven't done this for a while. Bear with me. We got 200 thumbs up. I got one more big thing for you. The longer I read that bell, I can give my, my voice. Don't leave. I'm, I'm stepping away for 10 seconds. And I have something I want to share with you that's breaking news to me. And I bet you haven't heard about this either. And it has to do... Silver again, believe it or not. Hold on, I'll be right back. Have you heard of this little company called Toyota? Have you heard of that company called Toyota? I know, you can make fun of my red shorts. No, I think I'm wearing my orange shorts today. I wear the same damn shorts. I have eight pair of them from JCPenney. <laughs> Hampton Bay. I love them. Okay, have you heard of this little company called Toyota? Have you heard about the electric car revolution? Okay, darn it. I wish I could tell you who sent. One of the viewers sent me this, and I apologize. I'm, I don't have it written on here. I printed it out. But, 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 Toyota announced a technological breakthrough. A technological Toyota, right? They're big. A technological breakthrough in electric car batteries that it claims will half their cost, size, and weight. Solid state battery technology, blah, 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 blah. But today's, here's the interesting thing. Are you ready for this? Today's researchers proposed, proposed utilize, utilizing a silver carbon composite layer as the anode. Hmm, interesting, right? A silver carbon composite layer which allowed the battery to support larger capacity, a longer life cycle, and enhanced overall safety. The ultra-thin silver carbon nanocomposite layer is five micrometers thick. So maybe, I don't know enough about this. The only drawback could be maybe it's like a little bit of silver. I don't know which allowed the team to reduce the anode thickness and increase energy dense density by up to 900 WH-L. I don't know a lot about electricity. Toyota is committed to commercializing its new solid state batteries. 
okay, uh, Toyota's like, but they're the biggest car company in the world, right? Right. Okay, they're going to commercialize this solid state, solid state battery with ambitions to have cars run using the new technology on the road as early as 2027. You know, I, I, bear with me because you guys make this show possible. And one of you sent me this article. I'm going to spend just a few seconds here looking through quickly to see if I can discover who it was that sent me this message. Bear with me. Toyota. Toyota. Here we go. Is that it? James, thank you. Wow, that was quicker than I thought. Our, my friend James Strohlein. Thank you, James Strohlein, for providing everybody here with that int new interesting piece of information I mean, guys, I don't know. And that's what he said when he sent me this email. He's like, more good news for silver. <laughs> more good news. All right, let's go to the comments. Did I cover everything? I think I did. I think we got most of it covered anyway. You know, it's a big deal that you're here with me. I appreciate you. I appreciate the thumbs up. I appreciate the super chats. That's a big deal. Means a lot. I appreciate the fact that we have this community and we're all part of it together, right? I mean, it's a big, big deal. It's not possible. I wouldn't just be down here talking to myself. Each and every one. Now, not each, you, yes. I mean, you know, each and every one of you absolutely matter. Okay? Absolutely. All right, guys. I'm going to wrap it up. I'll see you this week. Um, like I said... We're going to have a big, happy, happy, happy time next Sunday because I know that gold's going to be above $2,000 per ounce. Gerald Draper says, <laughs> Amazon crypto pre-sale right now, unicorn fart dust haters. <laughs> this Romanization is the future as all point of sale will be digitized. This AMZ, interesting, very interesting. Thank you, Chuck. You have a great week, too. Hey, uh, you know what, guys? I'm willing to stick around here just a few more minutes. I want to say hi to you. Tell me where you're joining us from in the in the chat, and I'm gonna I'm gonna say hello. Thank you, Dean. That's nice of you, Dean R. Neil V. God bless you, Jerry Robbins. Same bat time, same bat channel. Mike likes Ted. Neil, thank you, Neil. Thank you, buddy Rumble. I think Neil and Chris are on here, guys. They make this possible. Okay, thank you, Neil, Neil Hans Dynasty. Susie's working on, she knows she has the assignment. She's picking out the platinum bear. Down the road, ancient Tom. <laughs> Thomas Drellick, New York, Pennsylvania. Brooklyn, all right, man. Blue Ridge Mountains, Jerry Robbins. Uh-oh, this darn chats. I'm horrible with this. Table Rock Lake, Sharon. I love Table Rock Lake. Silicon Valley, Petumia, California. Sassy Silver. Metal Bowl, Utah, Chris Cuccio, Louisiana, Paul Beeler, Central Kentucky, Dave gives us a smiley face, Chuck's in Marietta, Georgia, okay, Matt Tindall's in Denver, Rusty Smith, uh, climate change is a grift, blah, 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 all right, electric cars, Ontario, Canada, GG, Gerald Draper, Chicagoland, good evening, Calvin Cooper, Karen Wilson, Northern Minnesota, 90, south of the Canadian border, Marius is in Toronto, C-130s at his parents' house. I tell mom and dad hi. Mike's in Sacramento. Oh, my gosh. Okay. Yoakum, Texas, Roger Yow. BCC, Gilligan's Island. Ella oh, boy. Silvershire's in Evansville, Indiana. Paul Scott's in Ohio. Bourbon, Stackers in his man cave. Steak bites in the great state of misery. Neil V is from the great state of Maine. Kalioma, my love. Everyone have a great evening from the eastern shore of Maryland. Thank you. Rusty Smith is in New Zealand. Wow. Tom D Tim Diaz is in Wyoming. Dave's in Chicago. Lawrence is in Sarnia, Ontario. 2003, Debo's in Texas. Linda's in Shreveport, Louisiana. Coin Shop Chris, we know he's from the moon. Oh, my gosh. Tennessee, Lena. Cincinnati, James Burrow, Dinars, and 
Thanks, Neil and Chris and Susie. Yes, thank you, guys. Okay, Western Arkansas. Sweet dreams, brother. See you later, my Vancouver Island guy. Mike's unicorn fart dust. <laughs> Mark Razor's not telling. Okay, Ryan McAdams in the Lone Star, Lone Star State. Oh, my gosh. You guys are overwhelming me. This is awesome. Good show, Don. <laughs> Don, Ron, Don, what the heck, you know? One of my neighbors calls me Roger. Catskill, New York, Richard. Wes is in West Michigan. Daryl Glass is in Ridgecrest, California. Louisiana Slim Stacker. That's where our friend Buddy Rumble hails from. Joe Fowler, my friend, the bell. All right, guys, I got to go off. You know why? Because right before I went live, my daughter Evelyn asked me to play catch with her, and I said I have this live stream scheduled, so I'm going to go play softball catch. You guys... Have a good night. Thank you. Okay? And you know I'm going to see you soon.